Okay, so thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, we really appreciate you being here. We know that everyone's busy and we, we appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to meet with us and learn about the options that you have in regards to the maintenance districts in your community. The city has been working with civicmike.com to educate.com, huh, not civicmike.com, civicmike staff to um, educate the community about the landscaping lighting districts uh, in your community. So our prim primary goal here is to provide sufficient information so you can make an informed decision about the services that are provided in your community and then the associated funding. There's a lot of people still jumping on here, so I don't want people to miss, miss things, but um, we're gonna go ahead and move forward. So tonight we'll cover some information that was shared in previous meetings, but we wanna bring everyone up to speed. We want to cover the history of the district and the loan options that we've been recently talking about in the poll, uh, funding details, uh, the survey and poll results, as well as how you can get engaged in the future. To respect everyone's time, we are going to keep the meeting at a, minimum, or a maximum of an hour. So um, right around an hour, we'll be wrapping it up the questions. We will share this presentation on civicmike.com forward slash Fairfield. If you haven't visited the website, there's tons of useful information there, um, educational materials. It will be very helpful to lead you through this process that we'll be covering over almost the next year. And Michelle from Civic Mike will go over that in later detail in the presentation. So I have a few ground rules that I want to cover to ensure that we respect everyone's time and personal viewpoints. As I mentioned, we'll keep this to an hour. Um, if you can hold questions until the end of all presentations, if you have a question, write it down so you don't forget it. But um, at the end of presentation, all the presentations, that's when we'll go to questions. Um, to finish the meeting in a timely manner, we may have to answer some questions offline, and that's okay. So you can reach out to us. We'll give you the various ways to reach out to us, uh, civicmike.com um, forward slash Fairfield. We have a 1-800 number. Our emails will provide all of that at the end of the presentation and in the chat, so you can have that information to contact us directly. To help with background noise, we will keep everyone on mute. We want to make sure that everyone's able to hear the presentations and um, we want you to respect others. So stay on mute if you can. So you know everyone's able to hear and doesn't hear the background noise. So our public engagement process aims to gather feedback from various demographics with diverse values. With that being said, we want to hear from all participants that may not have the same perspective as you or viewpoints as you, but we will attempt to shield everyone from personal attacks. So while I don't think this will happen, if anyone uses foul language or makes personal attacks, we'll move you to a private meeting room and then the moderator will let you stay there for a few minutes and then allow you to return to the meeting. But if the unacceptable behavior continues, we will remove you from the meeting and you will not be allowed to return. So like I said, I don't think uh, that's going to happen because we have a good group of people here. We, I recognize a lot of faces, a lot of people we've talked to already. So um, with that being said, I think we'll move on to our first presentation, which is Chris Lewis, a management analyst from the city of Fairfield. And she's going to cover the history of the districts and some information about the loan. Yes, uh, thank you everybody for attending. Um, first, I'd like to start by, uh, well, first, I do have a lot of information to cover, so forgive me if I'm speaking a little fast, but I do know we have that hour time limit, so I want to make sure I get through all this information here. I'd like to start by giving everyone a brief definition of what a Landscaping and Lighting Maintenance District is, or LLMD. Um, LLMDs are funding mechanisms used by local government to provide an enhanced level of landscaping and lighting service in a defined geographic area. The majority, if not all of those services that the district provides confers a special benefit to a specific community and are therefore funded by that specific community. Any portion of services that provide a general benefit to the general public um, is funded by the city itself. We do have NBS to um, talk a little bit about how that's determined later on in this presentation. So why are LLMDs formed? These districts are often formed at the request of a developer prior to or at the same time a specific community is being built. And from a developer perspective, establishing a mechanism that provides enhanced levels of service 
um, are more likely to increase property values and attract more buyers. Um, some developers choose to form an HOA, um, some just choose the LLMD, and in fact, some actually choose both um, to provide separate but complementary services. And there are various reasons why a developer would choose one or another, but the bottom line is that they want to, uh, they typically, um, uh, that they want to, uh, excuse me, <laughs> um, the bottom line is that they want to provide those higher level of services um, and um, that these uh, districts are established at the time um, the um, at the time the community is established or prior to um, any individual or property owner taking um, ownership of that property. When you purchased your property, there was a line item on your disclosures that informed you of these higher levels of service. Um, so we have had some questions about how um, LLMD assessments relate to property taxes and if LLMD assessments should be reduced based on the higher dollar amount of property taxes one pays in an area with higher property values versus the lower dollar amount another property owner pays in an area with uh, lower property values. Uh, the short answer to this question is no. Um, LLMD assessments should not be lowered based on the dollar amount of property taxes you pay, uh, because essentially all property owners pay their fair proportional share of 1% property tax. Um, all of that goes towards general countywide and citywide services that benefit the entire community, such as fire, police, parks, library, etc. Um, and it's not specifically for you know, any one neighborhood or geographic area. So we can't really equate paying a higher dollar amount, um, a higher property um, uh, tax dollar amount with being entitled to receiving a higher level of service since none of those property taxes are meant for the special benefit of any one community. Um, you may see some other charges on your property tax bill that are collected for previously defined purposes other than landscaping and lighting um, services. And with that being said, your LLMD assessments do show up on your property tax bill. They are collected along with your property taxes in accordance with the 1972 Landscaping and Lighting Act, but they are not directly related to the property taxes. I just wanted to make sure I got that um, out of the way so we could really focus on just the LLMD assessments and the special benefit that it provides uh, to your specific community. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Oh, there we go. So um, the LLMDs 7, 11, and 13 were formed between 1988 and 1990. And with the exception of a few of the more recent annexations in um, LLMD 13 North Cordelia, all the district's maximum assessment rates have remained um, unchanged and do not have a built-in inflator to mitigate the, the effects of rising costs over time since the date that they were established. These districts have uh, managed to sustain services for about 30 years without increasing, uh, without an increase to the established maximum assessment rates. But we're at a point now where those rising costs and just general inflation over time have exceeded the revenue that the city's authorized to collect. So it's time for the community now to make some decisions as to the level of service that they would like to receive and the assessments um, that they're willing to pay for the, you know, the next 30 years. And 30 years is just a estimated number. Don't hold me to that. Um, we'd like it to last that long. Next slide, please. This is a graphical representation of those costs exceeding revenues in rolling hills over um, at least the last five fiscal years. The blue line is the revenues and the orange line um, are the expenditures. Um, there's been a shortfall of as much as $250,000 back in fiscal year 2021 uh, for this district. Next slide, please. Paradise Valley, um, a similar graph here, you'll see that a there's been a shortfall of um, as high as nearly $70,000 in fiscal year uh, 1920. Again, that blue line is revenues and orange line is expenditures. You'll see some small increases um, to the revenues, which account for um, some of the recent development that was activated and, and issued their certificates of occupancy in that uh, area, as well as some other small miscellaneous revenues that the district received. Next slide. In North Cordelia, same thing. Um, revenues, uh, excuse me, expenditures have exceeded revenues. Um, and in 1718, that uh, gap was as high as $150,000. So again, with some new development in this area um, and um, some portions of this district um, has a built-in CPI. So you, you'll see a bit of an increase in, in revenue over the last five years. So 
In previous, oh, just, uh, well, that's okay. In previous years, the districts were able to draw on. We have more to look for one instead of making more. In previous years, the districts were able to draw on reserve funds or what we refer to as fund balance um, to kind of make up some of that, that gap. But uh, staff projected that these fund balances would be depleted in fiscal year 21 22, the current year that we're in if the services were to be provided at the same levels that have been provided for the previous years. Next slide. So in June 2021, during the annual budget and assessment approval proceedings, a staff offered the uh, proposed solution of reducing services in fiscal year 21-22 in order to prevent the district from falling into a total uh, cash deficit. Um, and uh, during that time, we would conduct a community engagement process and um, Prop 218 balloting procedures, uh, which would uh, uh, give the property owners um, the opportunity to decide the level of service that you would like to see and the maximum assessment level that you would like to pay for fiscal years 23, 24 and beyond. This solution was accepted by Council and it is still the plan. However, in December 2021, uh, after hearing from some of the community members, Council asked staff to come up with some creative solutions, which would allow the district to provide those same, you know, enhanced levels of service um, while we went through this community engagement process. So we wouldn't, you know, they were looking for solutions so that we didn't have to reduce those services. And one of these solutions, uh, was to issue a general fund loan to the districts. In January 2022, staff held a town hall to inform residents of this proposed loan and to receive feedback. In February 22, staff reported the results of, of that engagement to council and was directed to um, issue the loan. In March of 2022, staff was um, ready to present the final terms to council and uh, presented the resolutions to um, execute that loan. Uh, but, um, you know, council wanted us to just make sure that all community members were, were in favor of this loan, so they directed us to do 60 more days of community engagement, which leads us to where we're at today. April 1st of this year, a poll was released with uh, information regarding the loan, and right now we're holding the town hall to just further determine whether the communities are in favor of or against receiving this loan in order to maintain enhanced levels of service through fiscal year 22-23. Um, the Prop 218 process and, and you know, all the work groups we're gonna have during 22-23 will determine the rates starting uh, fiscal year 23-24. And the final line, final uh, row there on that, on that timeline is that um, staff will be reporting the results of the poll and town hall to council in May for further direction. Just to confirm, our goal today with you is uh, our goal today is to provide you with enough information to be able to move forward in this um, uh, community engagement process, and um, provide you with enough information for you to provide us with feedback about how um, you prefer if your support or um, whether you're for or against this loan, and then also to make an informed decision when you take the poll about this loan. But regardless of whatever decisions are made today, and regardless of whatever the, the poll results um, um, show, we will be coming back to the community through work groups and other meetings um, to determine what services and, and um, rates you would like to see in fiscal year 23 and 24. So this loan is just to keep carry us through 20, fiscal year 22-23. Okay, next slide, please. And so... Um, you're wondering what are these loan amounts that we keep talking about and what are the terms? So in order to provide services, those enhanced levels of service in uh, through fiscal year 22-23, um, and in order to pay for the community engagement um, services, the assessment engineering services that we'll need, and the Prop 218 balloting consulting fees necessary, uh, we will need loans of $410,000 in Rolling Hills, $175,000 in Paradise Valley, and $151,000 in North Cordelia. All of these loans will be issued at 0% interest and be repayable over five years. Now, these loans are based on um, the most recent and best information we had available to us uh, pri just prior to releasing uh, the poll. Um, these estimates do include actual expenditures that have hit the books through February of 2022. We still have, you know, four months left and, um, you know, some, some invoices that may lag behind. 
And we really tried to be conservative to make sure we weren't requesting a higher loan amount than we actually needed, because obviously uh, the property owners are going to be, you know, repaying this loan. So we tried to make sure we were conservative in that. Next slide, please. So naturally, after hearing the what the total loan amount is, you're probably wondering, what is your annual payment going to be? I'll start off with Rolling Hills. Um, in the Rolling Hills community, there's a portion of property owners who pay $250 per year, and the remaining portion of the property owners pay $300 per year. This was decided at the, you know, at the time the district was um, established, and it's based off the special benefit that each group of property owners receives. So each individual parcel that pays $250 per year pays the equivalent of 0.08% of the total assessments that are collected for the district, which is about $315,000. And likewise, the people who pay $300 per year pay a total um, of about 0.1% of the total collected for the district. The, the loan repayment amounts are determined using those same percentages. So 0.08% of the total loan of $410,000 is $325.21. If we spread that over five years, the annual loan payment for someone who is currently paying $250, um, their annual loan payment will be $65.04. Um, applying that same calculation to the $300 parcels, 0.1% uh, of the total $410,000 loan is $390.26. So those property owners will be paying $78.05 each year uh, for five years to repay this $410,000 loan. The loan repayment amounts are directly proportionate to the share of total assessments you are currently paying. Next slide, please. We apply, we apply the same methodology to the Paradise Valley District, uh, where most people are paying $190 per year. Those other two really large assessment amounts are the Paradise Valley Estates and the Extension, so um, they're in their own category. But every other home is paying $190 per year, which equates to 0.07% of the total $175,000 loan. So each property owner will pay $25.65 per year for five years to repay the loan. And lastly, we have North Cordelia. Um, North Cordelia has a few more different areas and a few more different assessment rates. These three assessment rates right here, 170, 180, and $850.45 represent the most common assessment rates um, we see in this district. So um, I'll just, uh, you can take a look at this chart and see that the people who are paying $170 right now, their loan repayment amount will be $8.48 and so on and so forth. If your assessment rate is not listed on this chart, right below the chart, there are some instructions on how you can figure out your loan repayment amount. Um, this uh, presentation will be available to you on the civicmic.com website, but the easier option and probably the one you should probably go with is just to call Civic Mike directly, send them an email or, or call them. Uh, send them a message and they can just tell you what your assessment or what your loan repayment amount will be if it's not listed here on this chart. Next slide, please. So that's what the loan repayment amount would be, but we have four different um, scenarios that can impact what your assessment amount is and, and ultimately um, whether or not you will be paying that loan um, over the next five years. There's a lot of information here on this chart, so we're just going to go row by row. Um, this is this chart will help you and, and guide um, help you uh, make your decision whether or not you support receiving the loan or not. Um, but just keep in mind there are four different scenarios that can happen between now and the end of 2223. So the first one here in that first row, um, this one is pretty easy. You see in the actions taken column, um, the first scenario is that the loan is not issued. Um, the community members decide they, they don't want to make a loan payment. Um, and after we go through this community engagement process, the community members also decide they don't want to increase their assessments and they're, you know, they're happy with where they are and what they're, with what they're paying. Uh, so what this means is that beginning in 22, 23 and beyond forevermore until, you know, something changes, um, like another Prop 218 vote, services will continue to be reduced over time to match whatever revenue the district receives you know, for any given year. 
And of course, costs keep rising. So your dollar will go, you know, um, less and less far over time um, because of those inflation rates. So you'll see in that first scenario, no loan, no new assessments. In 22, 23, you'll keep paying your current assessments. And in 23, 24 and beyond, you'll keep paying your current assessments. In the second scenario, during the, on that second row there, you'll see that um, this one uh, includes the loan not being issued. So the committee members take the poll and they say, no, thank you, we, we prefer to just not take the loan. However, after going through the community engagement process, residents decide that they do wanna enhance their services and they are willing to pay. So those new assessments are approved. What's gonna happen in this scenario is in that second column, you'll see the effect on services. Um, since no loan was taken in fiscal year 22-23, the services will be reduced to match whatever revenue we have, because remember, we didn't get the loan, so we can increase the services. And in fiscal year 22-23, uh, you'll see you're continuing to pay your same rates that you're paying. However, in fiscal year 23-24, uh, we will um, start providing those new and enhanced services that the community voted for. And um, the community will start paying those new assessments that they voted for. So that one is, is kind of also you know, um, easy. The third um, scenario, the third possible um, scenario is that the loan is issued. So everybody right now is in support of the loan. But after we go through this year long process, the community decides they actually don't want to increase their services um, and they don't want to increase their assessments. So since the loan was issued, we're gonna go ahead and use that loan for what it's for. And in 22, 23, we're gonna increase, we're gonna bump up those services, provide services that are comparable to what was provided in previous years. Um, um, I'm sorry, did I say that they're not approved? This third possible scenario is that the loan is issued and that the new assessments are approved. Sorry, just to clarify, <laughs> we're on the third. We're on the third possible outcome here. Um, so, um, in twenty three twenty four, um, you will end up paying the loan amount plus the new assessments that were approved during this community engagement process. Um, so that's scenario number three. And in the fourth, uh, the fourth and final scenario is that last row there. Um, this is the situation in which the loan is issued, um, but the community members go through this um, engagement process over the next year and they decide that they do not want increased assessments. In this scenario, um, we will uh, provide the increased services during fiscal year 22-23 because that's what we received a loan for. But in fiscal year 23, 24, and beyond, we will reduce the services to match whatever revenue is available in any given year. The tricky part in this scenario is what happens to the assessments that you pay. It is not, you're not going to keep paying your current assessment plus the loan amount. Um, if you look in the uh, column titled um, fiscal year 23, 24 through fiscal year 27, 28, you'll notice that. Um, the loan payment amount um, represents a portion of your current assessments. Um, so in this case, you will continue to pay whatever you're paying right now, but a portion of what you're paying is gonna go towards the loan payment and the remainder of that assessment is gonna go towards actual services. So, um, I wanna spend a little time, yep, thank, thank you very much. I wanna spend a little more time on this fourth scenario because it is a little bit more confusing. Um, and I, again, I know that there's a lot on this slide here. Um, up top is that same fourth row that you saw, same fourth scenario. And I'd like to give you an example of, of the assessment and, and what portion is gonna to go towards your loan and what portion is gonna to go towards your services. In this example, your current assessment in fiscal year 21-22 is $100. A loan is issued to you and it's approved with a $25 annual repayment amount for five years, beginning in fiscal year 23-24. We, we go through this engagement process, a new assessment is not approved. So you'll notice in the chart to the right there that beginning in 23-24, when your first loan payment is actually due, you're still going to pay just that $100 assessment, but $75 of that is going towards your services 
but only $75 is going towards your services and $25 is going towards the loan payment. So less of your $100 assessment is actually going towards services. So in this case, you're going to be paying the same amount that you've always paid, but you'll notice an accelerated decrease in services because one, you have to make the loan payment and two, costs for services are only going to continue to go up. Inflation is only going to continue to go up and it's really going to devalue um, what your dollars are worth over time. So you won't be paying any more, um, you know, your amount won't go up. Um, but the services that you'll actually receive will go down at an accelerated rate. So out of all four possible scenarios, this option um, will result in a faster decline in services over time. That was a lot of information, um, but feel free to reference these slides after or ask questions um, towards the end. I'll turn it back over to NBS now. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Now, Sarah Maris from NBS will cover funding details for the assessment. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Mears with NBS. I am the director of our um, district formation consulting team, and I work with the formation and uh, other, other aspects of landscape maintenance districts um, for on behalf of NBS for cities and other local government agencies throughout the state. Next slide. Uh, this is just a quick agenda. We'll talk about the legislative context and uh, some of the assessment factors, and we'll give you a, a timeline. Next slide, please. Again, as Chris mentioned, we're trying to trying to stay on time here, so apologies for trying to move along quickly and, and talk quickly um, so that you do have time for questions. Um, we'll spend some time here on the legislative context. We'll talk about Proposition 13 because that's where, um, you know, generally local government revenues uh, changed very significantly and the reason that um, we are looking at an assessment district. We'll talk about Proposition 218 and Proposition 26. Um, all three of those are voter initiatives that were passed by voters in California over the years. And then we'll talk a little bit more about uh, specifically the Landscape and Lighting Act of 1972, which is the, um, the Landscape and Lighting Act of 1972 is the authorizing legislation for these types of districts. Next slide. So Proposition 13, as I mentioned, this is a, um, an initiative that was approved by voters in 1978. So you can raise your hand real quickly if you remember voting on this measure um, or leave it down if you prefer not to um, share your age with everyone on the call. Um, the effect of Proposition 13 was to limit the value increase of your general property tax to 2% a year. So even though right now we're in an environment where the value of your home, the market value of your home is increasing more than 2% a year, the value that your general property taxes is based on is limited to an increase of only 2% each year. It also set a 1% rate cap on ad valorem or value-based property taxes. Those are the general property taxes that local governments receive. So every property pays that 1% ad valorem property tax on the value of your property. Again, that value is limited to 2% a year. And then that 1% total property tax is split up among all of the agencies that serve your property. So in this case, it's the city of Fairfield. It's the county of Solano. It may be, you know, mosquito abatement districts or water districts or various other types of districts that serve the community all get a share of that 1%. And that was all set at the time of the adoption of Proposition 13. Proposition 13 added the Article 13A to California's constitution. Next slide. So a few years later, we have another initiative that comes before voters in California called Proposition 218. This one in 1996. Proposition 218 added some additional rules about assessment districts. And the landscape and lighting maintenance assessment district that we're talking about is an assessment. 
There are strict rules about how assessments are calculated. It involves an engineer's report that's prepared and signed and stamped by a registered professional engineer. And there's a process by which the assessments have to be approved by property owners called a protest ballot proceeding. I'll talk a little bit more about how that works later. And it also says that government owned property is not exempt. So the assessment amount charged to each parcel of land within the assessment district has to be based on the amount of special benefit that is accrued to property by the improvements and maintenance and operation of those improvements identified in the engineer's report. And uh, Proposition 218 added Articles 13 C and D to the California Constitution. Next slide. So just a few years later, we have another initiative that came before voters in California, Proposition 26 in 2010 added the definition of a tax to California Constitution. Um, this made amendments to Article 13C that was previously added by Proposition 218. And what it tells us is that we basically now have three different categories of additional revenue that can be collected by local government agencies. Aside from your general property tax, there is a special tax that's a type of um, that's a type of charge that requires a two thirds vote of registered voters. There are fees which have to be allocated based on the cost of providing service, and there are assessments which are allocated based on the special benefit received by properties based on the improvements and services provided. Next slide. So in that context, the Landscape and Lending Act of 1972 is authorizing assessments to be collected. And with that, the, they are allowed to fund generally the maintenance and operation of parks, landscaping, street um, lights, traffic lights, um, those types of improvements. Of course, it's called the Landscape and Lighting Act. So those are the types, generally the types of improvements that can be funded with this particular mechanism. It does require that engineer's report that I mentioned because it's an assessment district. The engineer's report has to have the basis and schedule in, of assessment. So we have to tell you in that engineer's report what the rates are, what the, how the assessment is proportionally allocated to each individual parcel within the district, and what is the separation of general benefit, which is benefit conferred to the community at large, versus special benefit, which is benefit conferred specifically to property in the district. So again, separate that general and special benefit, take that special benefit amount and allocate that to properties within the assessment district. Um, if you want more information that is found, the Landscape and Lighting Act of 1972 is found in the Streets and Highways Code section 22500. Next slide. So assessment engineering um, is a process that we go through for each individual assessment district that we're looking at. So in the case of the districts that we're here to talk about tonight, we will be going through the same process for each district looking at all of the factors for each individual district in order to determine what the assessment amount will be in the future when we're ready to come back around and give you that information, provide you with the allocation of assessment for that increased high level of service. So the first step is to identify exactly what improvements are going to be maintained determine the maintenance cost estimate, identify all of the parcels that benefit from the maintenance of those improvements, separate that general benefit that's conferred to the public at large from the special benefit that is conferred to each of the parcels within the assessment district, allocate the proportional special benefit to the parcels. So for example, that can look like uh, benefit points that are assigned to parcels based on factors such as land use, perhaps um, size of property or frontage information. Those are all possibilities of ways that the assessment can be allocated proportionately. Um, 
And then once we've come up with that methodology, we'll take that cost estimate and calculate the assessment to be levied on each individual parcel within the district. Next slide. We have a proposed schedule here for you. We'll spend the time between now and, and the end of the, that should say December of 22, not 23. Um, I just noticed we'll spend this calendar year essentially um, doing this public outreach, doing this engagement, gathering data. We'll be working on that general and special benefit analysis and the engineer's report. So all of those steps that I just outlined will be work that is occurring between now and the end of the year. We'll be looking at April 2023 to have the first step of the legislative process to adopt the new assessment. That uh, meeting is called our intent meeting, and there is a resolution of intention that is uh, uh, considered by city council. That resolution of intention includes that engineer's report that I discussed. Following that meeting, Assuming that it, that resolution is approved by city council, ballots will be mailed to property owners. The ballots, again, it's a property owner protest proceeding. So if you are a renter perhaps in a property and someone else owns the property, it is the owner who has the ability to cast a ballot. That's by virtue of state law registration of voters and what have you is not what we're looking at here. The ballots are weighted according to the financial obligation of each property. And so that's your assessment amount. Again, I, I talked about that a little bit. We're going to allocate that assessment amount. So if I, I own a property in the district and my assessment amount is $10 and Danielle owns a property in the district and her assessment amount is $5, that means my ballot is weighted twice as much as hers because my financial obligation in the district is twice as much as hers. So again, ballots weighted on the assessment amount assigned to each property. Those will be mailed out at least 45 days prior to the public hearing that would be held in June. In June, that public hearing would be opened, obviously an opportunity for property owners to hear and be heard on the matter. And then following the close of the public hearing, that's when ballots would be tabulated to determine whether or not there is a majority protest. So of the ballots returned, we would look at the total financial obligation who cast their ballot in favor. And we'd look at the total financial obligation of the ballots cast in opposition. If those cast in opposition are weighted higher or the dollar amount associated with them is greater than those in favor, then we have a majority protest and the district may not be formed. To say that another way, if the dollar amount in favor is greater than the dollar amount in opposition, we can move forward with the resolution of formation at that, at that uh, council meeting. And that's essentially the process that we go through to form the district. Um, and again, this is the general timeline, just uh, change that December 23 to December 22, and uh, that will be accurate. And I will, um, I'll make sure that that change is updated on the version of this that's posted on the website. And uh, next slide, please. I know I put a slide in for questions, but um, I think we're holding those all till the end, so. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was a lot of information. So um, Chris, followed by Sarah. You all have heard um, a ton of detailed information. Hopefully, you know, you can absorb some of that. But like we said, the presentation will be put on civicmic.com so you can go and rewatch it if you'd like. Um, now we have Michelle Argeridge Valentine, who will go over very quickly <laughs> ways for you to get engaged and some lighter information, some of the poll and um, survey results as they stand now. Michelle? All right. All right, uh, like Danielle said, I'm Michelle Argridge Valentine, and I see a lot of familiar faces here, and so I just wanted to welcome everybody that I see. Um, all right, go ahead and uh, go to the next slide. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over some of the survey results. Um, I wanna let you know that uh, for Rolling Hills, we have had 243 survey responses, which is really, really great. Um, as well as for 
I'm sorry, Paradise Valley, we've had 66. And then uh, for North Cordelia, we've had about 45. So um, make sure that you are going out there and letting people in your community know that those surveys are up. And we'll talk more about that later on in the presentation as well. All right, go ahead and go to the next slide. So uh, for the survey, we, um, for the, are you aware of the services in your LM, that, that <laughs> services your LLMD provides, um, we have a lot of yeses, which is really great. Um, and then go ahead and go to the next one. Um, are you aware that your property tax bill includes a line item for the LLMD by the city? Again, a lot of yeses, some no's, especially in North Cordelia, it's getting, uh, it's a little uh, more. And um, also that's where we have the least amount of responses. So definitely want to engage there. And then go ahead and go to the next one. And then are you aware of the boundaries of your LLMD? Um, again, more yeses than there are noes. These are really questions to find out what people know within the districts. And so if you did answer no, or if you do know somebody who answered no, I hope that this meeting, that civicmike.com slash Fairfield can answer some of these questions and that you can really be informed once you get that ballot so that you can make uh, decisions. Um, you can make decisions on the loan and make those decisions for your community and for yourself and your families. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, all right, so is it important that my city continues to provide landscaping maintenance and improvements in my area? You can see that people strongly agree with this. Uh, landscaping is uh, important according to this poll and people really value it. So go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, when it comes to your community landscaping, list the following in order. Um, so safety tend to, tended to be the number one um, in all in all the the district, um, and then closely behind uh, scenery and cost effectiveness tended to be really up there as well. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. Now, <laughs> this is always a funny one to me. I am willing to pay a larger assessment than I do now to maintain landscaping services at the level provided in 2021. Now you see that strongly strongly agree is, is less. Um, people say it's important, but uh, that, that financial aspect definitely always comes into play. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, along with a larger assessment, I would support an additional amount to allow the city to provide services beyond what it provided in 2021. This is um, in, in addition to, so if you want even better services, this is, um, you know, a lot of people are that neither agree or disagree. I can only imagine that's as you gain more information that people will have a, um, a, a stronger viewpoint on this. You see that uh, there are some strongly dis uh, strongly agrees, a lot of strongly disagrees, and it's kind of uh, everywhere at this point. Go ahead and go to the next slide. And then I am comfortable paying um, a certain percentage more than what I currently pay. Um, a lot of the, a lot of people said none of the above. And then 10% uh, seems seems to be up there with uh, the amount people would would be willing to pay. All right, so that was our survey. Um, if you have questions about that, we will we will go um, into questions a little bit later. And now for the poll results. Um, our poll was a second poll that we had, or a our first poll, um, three questions about uh, the loan. And so, if you took it here, are some of the results that we've we've gotten so far. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, I support a loan to subsidize the revenues needed to maintain services comparable to the fiscal year 2020, 2021 and avoid reductions in the quality of the landscaping. Um, yeah, so uh, a lot of people are strongly agreeing to this. Um, if you would like to retake the poll after um, after you've learned more about it today, please feel free to retake it. Go ahead and just email us and let us know. And we can definitely allow you to retake that if, you, if you've changed your mind. Um, and so, yeah, so right now we are strongly agree that people really want to 
want it to continue. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, and then I'm willing to pay a higher assessment for five years to pay both the new assessment amount and the new district to repay the loan needed to maintain landscaping. Um, again, strongly agree um, is, is, um, is definitely ahead there. And uh, go ahead and go to the next one. Now, this one is really important um, because I see a lot of no's. So I am aware that if the new district is formed, I will not have to pay, I sorry, I will still have to pay back the loan over five years. And so um, a, a majority said yes, which is really great. But those no's, I really want to emphasize that if the loan is taken, then even if the Prop 218 fails, that you will have to pay that loan back over five years. So that would mean a reduction of services. Um, and if it was, then again, that 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 just like Chris said in that one ch chart, um, that you will have to repay that loan if it is if it is approved. All right. So now for the fun, the more fun stuff. <laughs> go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, if you haven't taken the survey or the poll, or like I said, if you've changed your mind, if you've learned something today or on the website that you've decided that you um, maybe feel differently, please feel free to to retake it and let us know. Um, and then you can always take that that poll and that survey at civicmike.com slash Fairfield. You're going to find a lot of information there. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, sign up for updates. This is the best way to stay informed and make sure that you are in the know about, about your district. Uh, we will send um, updates uh, updates on the polls, on the surveys, uh, if we have another community meeting, um, all of that will be posted, uh, be sent to you via email if you sign up for updates. Um, so be sure to do that. It's definitely the best way to stay informed. And then go ahead and go to the next slide. The community working group. If you are interested in joining the working group, please email us at contact at civicmike.com. We are going to have a meeting on April 28th at 6 p.m. And so the working group is really a community-based group that is going to just make sure that people are informed about the, about the district, about the LLMDs, about the situations that are going on. If you are for, if you are against it, um, it doesn't matter. We are really, really just there to keep people informed and make sure that people are able to make informed decisions with the with the knowledge that that they have. Um, and so please uh, come join us. And then um, if anybody who is on the working group now uh, wants to go off mic just for a second and invite some people on, that would be lovely, not putting anybody on the spot. But um, if, if somebody from the working group wanted to do that, that would be wonderful. We see some of you out there. <laughs> I see, yeah. <laughs> your community members, and there are many of your community members already working on helping to engage their neighbors, so. Um, this is Pam Bertani, can you hear oh. me? Yes, thank yes. you, Pam. Okay, thank you. Thank you uh, for the comprehensive presentation. My concern is that we have about eight minutes left. Yes, Pam, we're going to move right into questions right now after but, this. But but I but I don't I, I don't think that eight minutes is sufficient time. We'll give, we'll give a little bit uh, we'll give a little bit of extra time. We're not going to cut off right at an hour. Um, we did go over in our presentation time sharing the, a lot of detailed information. So. We'll, we'll, we'll see how people are going as long as a lot of people don't start dropping off. We don't want people to miss the answers to questions. So as long as everyone's hanging on with us, we'll stay answering questions. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure that people that have questions are able to uh, ask those questions because that was a lot of information, Makes very much. comprehensive, way too much, very detailed, way very, too much, very dense. And so I just I just think that you know, I mean, I appreciate your, uh, um, I, I appreciate your presentation. Okay, let's move into questions then so we can get some of those answered. I'll go ahead and let you know what the um, 
question format's going to look like. So um, we will open it. We want to go between different people, those who are on the phone, as well as those who are on video and some that would like to chat. So um, we ask that everyone stay muted. Please don't do any grandstanding. We're here to talk about the items that we've covered tonight and answer questions to those items. So we don't uh, want to waste any time, you know, kind of talking about rehashing things that have happened in the in the past or anything like that. So if you can keep your questions to the items covered tonight, um, anything that you may think we have missed and one question per person. So if you ask a question and fold in three questions, we're going to go with your first one and then we're going to move to another property owner so we can get as many questions answered as possible. Um, so at this point, I'll go ahead. If you want to raise your hand, um, you can do that on um, your on your screen there, and everyone stay on mute. And we'll we'll select someone that's raised their hand, and I'll ask for someone to unmute and say your first and last name, and then we'll go with that person. So right now we have a hand raised by Sam. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, I have a question. Uh, do I understand correctly that we're going to borrow money uh, for to to pay for service for one year and then repay that service over five years? Yes, that is correct. Well, that's a one proposed solution. So um, if you, we are looking for feedback from the community um, via the poll um, and this town hall meeting, um, whether residents are in support of that or against that. Thank you, Chris. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone, we'll have Nora with your hand raised, Nora. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Wonderful. My question is, you've got a lot of residents that are in the LMMDs. Let's say that the uh, majority just never respond. Does that count as a no vote? Nora? A no vote towards um, the poll uh, towards um, when you say respond, do you mean in a poll or as we go through the Prop 218 process for new when assessment? You, when you actually send out the ballot and you're asking for an approval or disapproval, will a no response count as a no vote? No, it does not. The Tab ballot tabulation is based on the ballots received. So we will tabulate only those ballots received and uh, we'll look at the amount in favor and the amount in opposition. So if you do not submit a ballot at all, um, you, you are essentially not counted in the process. Thank you, very informative. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Um, Randy, go ahead. <laughs> Mark, My we'll, question, we'll call yes. on you next. Oh. My question. Hello. Yes, Randy, go ahead. Okay. My question has to do with the substantial increase in costs that occurred a couple of years ago, um, according to the the chart that you showed. Um, I'm wondering um, what if if there's any information on what caused that to happen. Um, which district are you referring to? Uh, Rolling Hills. Rolling Hills, there was a new contract. Um, the previous contract ended. And so an RFP went out um, around 19, uh, fiscal year 1920, 2020. RFP. And um, <clears throat> the... Um, bids that came back were much higher than anticipated, uh, as much as 50% higher than anticipated. So in order to, to provide services, um, the city went with the lowest uh, bid at the time. And the scope of services was the same? You know, I don't, I don't have that um, right in front of me here, okay. but um, I believe that the scope of services was substantially the same. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Randy. Mark, um, if you'd like to unmute and ask a question. Please. Well, can I make a, just a real quick couple of comments? Uh, um, num num well, number one, uh, this is for Paradise Valley. Uh, we would like to uh, to uh, remove Manual Campus and the freeway from our district. That would save a lot of money. And we would like the oversight budget, which is 70000 reduced quite a bit. And my other thought that's never come up tonight is, guess what? Is there an adult in the room? We're in a drought. We, we can't afford Shangri-La right at the moment. 
Good night, everybody. Thank you, Mark. We will cover those items in more detail as we continue to move on with the engagement process. We'll have individual meetings for each community. This will be the last meeting that we do as a group setting um, in this manner, but we really wanted to get through the poll questions so we could get responses to the count, uh, council. So thank you for that input, Mark. We will definitely make sure to cover that in more detail in the future. Um, Carol. You're on mute, Carol. Uh, I'm, I'm muting, there we go. Uh, Chris, quick, quick question. Could you explain just a little bit more about the enhanced services versus what's left? And I live in Rolling Hills, and I realize all three districts are going to run out of funding, mm -hmm. but we have $81,000. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean if that runs out in fiscal year this year at the end of June uh, versus enhanced? So the enhanced level of service that we're referring to is if we were um, approved for the loan, we would provide um, services that are comparable to the services that were provided in fiscal year 21-22 and previous. Um, so that's just that full level of service um, prior to the reductions that actually happened starting January 1, 2022 of this year. Remember, those reductions were proposed um, back in June of 2021 at the beginning of this whole budgeting process um, to make sure that the budget um, was balanced and we didn't have a cash deficit. So um, those enhanced level of services really just mean what we get, what was provided, you know, in previous years. Exactly. But when I have talked to a lot of neighbors and so have a lot I mean, I, I see some of my neighbors on here. Mm -hmm. They don't know if it's mowing or is it watering? What is the level of service? So when you're talking about that, I think you're talking to an audience that doesn't know exactly what it is they're receiving. Right. That, that's actually, that's good feedback there. Um, when we took the um, contracts to be reduced um, back in December of 2021, um, I I can't recall 100%, but I'm not sure if the chart, we created a chart to show, you know, in 1920 or previous, you received mowing four times a week. And then, you know, now what we're proposing as a reduction of services is mowing two times a week, as an example, right? Um, so we do have a chart available. What I can do is give that chart to Civic Mike um, so they can post it on the website. <laughs> and uh, that way- I think that's what all three districts yeah. need, hun. And, and yeah. then people know what it is we're paying for right. and why it is. How many yeah. acres we've talked about this? Yeah. So, so I, I will I will make a note of that. Great. Thank. Thank you. Um, I, I think we may have some of that information on Civic Mike already, but um, you know, we'll make we'll double check and make sure that it's out there so everyone can see that. Um, Jeannie, would you like to unmute? Yes. Thank you. Um, we're just wondering why all of a sudden this has come up that there's this big shortage? Um, well, so it, I, I hesitate to say that it's um, something that, that's come up just this year. So if you saw by the graphs, we actually had a deficit in each one of the fiscal years, pretty much for the last five fiscal years. Public Works has undergone a staffing structure change. So we have some new people on board um, and we have NBS here helping us to really take a fine tooth comb to these districts to identify some of these deficits, identify where we need to improve, um, and then also what the districts can actually afford. So um, all of those staffing changes has happened um, within the last year, year and a half. Um, We've gone through, um, last year was the first full cycle. We've, we've um, started to take that fine tooth comb, um, um, which is why we identified the deficit um, to begin with in June of 2021. And as we move forward, we will continue to uh, make sure that we are uh, not only looking at uh, the current fiscal year and the fiscal year immediately following, but we will be projecting out five and maybe even 10 years if, if possible. Thank you for that, Chris. Um, Rick, did you have a question? I know there's some people having a hard time um, with raising their hand. I saw yours as well, David. So I'll, I'll go to Rick, then David, okay. then I'll do some of those that have raised their hand on the screen. There is no raise my hand at the bottom of my screen. So I was, I was, I was texting to your office and that's why you have me on here. The bottom of my screen just says participants chat, share screen record. It doesn't say raise hand. So people may have questions and if they have the same screen I do, 
they're not going to be able to ask you a question. And I'm just suggesting that, yes, please go on so that people can ask the questions. The purpose of tonight was to be able to get information to the people and then allow them to ask questions. And I don't know uh, if that's going to take place. Uh, Pam brought that up as far as we do need more question time than was originally allowed. So I'm going to. Okay, so let's let's go question. ahead and focus on those questions then, because yes. we we yes. all understand we want to ask some questions, but now we're down to a group of 88. So um, let's keep the questions moving. David, would you like to unmute and ask your question, please? Uh, I'll ask you to unmute. So yeah, unmute. Go. Okay, thank you. you. Um, You're welcome. Sorry, I think um, I'm in I'm in Rolling Hills district, and I think the big things we're really concerned about are mowing, weed abatement, herbicide, sprinkler maintenance, uh, those types of things. When we received the postcard from this from Civic Mike, I think initially it said uh, the first news we had it said. The landscape budget will be reduced from 330,000 a year to 81,000 a year. This will result in a reduction of the following services. It listed three things, tree, plant, and bark replacements. And I thought, well, that's no big deal. Pest control and fertilizer applications. Well, we could maybe do without that. And then tree and shrub and ground cover trimmings. So those are the three things that are listed on what was going to be reduced. And then uh, there's another document on Civic Mike that says Rolling Hills Service Reductions, which is a detailed spreadsheet and which covers a lot more of the important things like uh, mowing, but it doesn't compare at all with the, um, the, the postcard that we got. And I'd like to just segue over to the survey that we got. Now, uh, question number seven, the order of importance of five different things did not address mowing, weed abatement, herbicide, uh, sprinkler maintenance. It addressed pet kid-friendly, water-saving, eco-friendly, scenery, cost-effective, and safety. And uh, those are not the big items that the residents are concerned with. So my question is, how did we come up with those questions on the survey? And why is there a gap between what we saw in the postcard and the spreadsheet that says, Rolling Hills service reductions. Uh, Danielle, you're on mute. Oh, I was going to say, David, we could talk offline about how some of the engagement questions are crafted. A lot of those questions are very general that cover specific topics, and we can determine based on the answers to those response, the responses to those questions, um, which of those very detailed items, such as herbicide, would where those would fit in priorities. Like I said, this is um, not the last meeting for the community, right? Um, we're going through a process that's going to take over a year, so we're taking very different approaches to find information, refine your responses, and then hone in on what's really important to each community. So I understand not everyone on this call um, will agree that the process that's taken place so far is what they think they would have done, but um, you know that's kind of the path we're going. But we're definitely open to hearing um, from as many people as possible. So reach out to us, David. We'd like you to be on the working group. The working group will help to educate your neighbors and community members about this process and about the districts. And you can share some of that insight there and what you'd like to share as well and how we craft the message for the next meetings. So we really appreciate your feedback on that. Um, let's go ahead and go with Shonda. Did you have a question? Go ahead and unmute. I just heard the answer you gave David, and I'm now reluctant to make my statement. I actually think he very articulated what I wanted to say um, okay. partly um, very well, and I'm worried that you maybe didn't hear him okay. by your response that you gave. Um, and I, I wish I had the time. Um, I'm trying to make the time to participate in this process, but everybody doesn't have the ability to ongoing participate in this process, but it doesn't mean right. that it's not important. Right. Um, I am worried that the literature and the information that has gone out thus far does not provide adequate information about what we're really talking about, because I too was thinking like, what kind of landscaping? Because some of that stuff they could just stop doing. But when you get down to the nitty gritty, 
um, it's some really important things like mowing the lawn. Um, but the initial information that was given and everything that I've seen so far doesn't really give me information for me to vote whether or not I would want my money to go. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll give an example of just ignorance on my part. I don't know. I'm learning about this all through this process. Right. I had to, it's along I was, with your neighbors too. Right. So it's a I lot of information. Along and I right. asked myself, is water included in what they're talking about? Because some of the grass looks like it's dying just because they're not watering it. Like forget mowing it. I just think they need to turn the water on. And then I walk a little further over to the park and I'm thinking, well, they're flooding this whole area. So maybe they didn't get some. So I was thinking, well, who's paying for the water? And so it's just basic. I don't know. Is water included? So that's my question, but more just I think the information is not adequate. Yeah, um, thank you for that, Shonda. We definitely have a lot of information in detail on civicmike.com, but any questions like that, and I know everyone doesn't have the same amount of time to invest, but if you can shoot us an email, um, give us a quick call and say, hey, all I gotta say is I think there should be more information about water. You know, we noted that here, um, noted about the mowing and um, also the detailed services. So Chris will work with us on that to make sure we get that out to you because any of those questions you have, if you have it, likely your neighbor has the same question, right? So um, don't, don't feel um, bad about asking those questions. That's why we wanna hear from you. And um, even if you can't participate on the working group. And Danielle, I just wanna jump in the chart that was created that shows the services that were being provided and the reduction of services. We do actually have that on the um, Civic Mike website under um, the legal and administrative documents. Um, I see it at least here for LLMD um, 11. Oh, it's here for, it's oh, okay. here for all districts. So it is yeah. on the Civic Mike. Right. Thank you, Chris. Um, Richard, did you have a question? Richard Wood, you can go ahead and unmute. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, it seems like we got into this situation because there was no inflator included in the funding formulas uh, when these maintenance districts were originally set up, but it just seems logical to me that that sort of thing would have to be included in anything like this that's going to go on for a long period of time. Uh, is that something the law allows or is it something uh, uh, that uh, you have to vote on every time or what? So, good evening. Good evening. My name is Sandra Burkhart, and Sarah had to step out early um, for another meeting. But um, yeah, that the CPI inflator is something that would be part of the formation process, and we absolutely would include it. Once it's approved as part of the formation, that's the only time it needs to be approved. It will be approved as part of the formation, and then annually, the CPI inflator would be applied to the maximum assessment rate. Does that help? Yes, thank you. I, I just uh, I was wondering why it wasn't done originally, but uh, I, I'm glad that we can. If we have a new uh, assessment and we have a new, we resolve this issue, I certainly would want an inflator to be included so we don't have to come back and do this again. Absolutely. And the laws have changed over time, and that's why um, inflators weren't necessarily a part of these older districts, but we would include them in the new districts. And that would be on your ballot to approve that. Um, I'd just like to add, we may include them in your new district. So that would be something that will be discussed at the specific community meetings within your within your community about your new assessment. Um, because Richard, while um, you know, we definitely see a lot of benefit in having an inflator so we don't have to go through this process again in three to five years, if community members are not willing to approve a higher assessment amount because of an inflator, then that's something we want to consider as well. So um, that that's definitely one of the questions that we'll continue to work through um, over, you know, the next six to eight months when we're developing this. So good question, Richard, thank you. Um, I have Brian Grabber, if you'd like to unmute, do you have a question? Yeah, good evening. Thank you for all the good information tonight and sharing that with us. Uh, uh, very uh, insightful. One of the, uh, the the slides you showed was a chart showing where the uh, shortfalls were. And it appeared that a lot of those shortfalls fell in 2019, you know, when we went through COVID and then extended into 2020. But that's just a, an assumption on my part. But my question is, is why aren't we using a part of the money received, which Fairfield received $21.5 million from the Federal Recovery Act for these shortfalls? 
Um, I'm not sure I'm, I'm too familiar with the terms of the of the monies received for um, the Federal Recovery Act, um, but I don't believe that any of those monies are intended to be used for um, this special purpose um, for landscaping and lighting if um, if the shortfalls were not due uh, to um, COVID. Um, again, I'm not too familiar with that, um, but because these shortfalls were not a direct um, result of anything that happened because of COVID, I don't think we would be entitled to um, use any of that money for these purposes. Is it possible to check on that? Because uh, I understand in other cities, they've been able to use that money into all kinds of different things. Sure. So, yeah, we'll would, definitely yeah. work with the city to look at some of the ARPA funds and um, different funding available and then put that on Civic Mike to let everyone know um, how those funds can be used and um, you know, if that's an option there. So thank you. Actually, thank you, Brain Grabber. Um, <laughs> that's my nickname. It's All Brian right? Garber, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, Carol, did you have a question? Would you like to unmute? Uh, yes, I sent you a chat. Do you want to read the first question? Did you get it? Um, let's see. Bianca, did that go directly to you? Yes, it did. Let me find it one second. Okay, so the first question was, are there fees from Civic Mike and MBS included in the assessments? Yes, a portion of the assessments will go to pay for these services. And then uh, Carol's second question is, was there a bidding process for a contractor to perform these services and how was a contractor chosen? No, NBS was procured in accordance with our procurement policy, which states that all professional services can be procured based on qualifications and not necessarily lowest bid. So um, NBS um, was uh, determined to be the most qualified um, uh, company to provide these services. Um, also, the company that has the most resources available, um, for example, staff, um, NBS does have a, a good um, team um, that was available in the time frame that we needed to be able to provide um, these services um, in the next uh, couple years. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Carol. Um, it looks like we have one more question here in the chat. I'm going to ask that. And then if um, there are other questions, we're going to you move forward and try and answer those and then we'll get to wrapping this up soon we've had a lot of participants jump off now that we've been um, a little bit over time here but this is from robert says i live in rolling hills sanctuary valley area this week i noticed that the fire access roads behind our homes have growth of weeds and tall, as tall as a person <laughs> are the roads part of the services that are being cut chris is that something that you know specifically in the Rolling Hills area, there is an open space area in the back, which is a different, um, I believe is a different funding source, but what I can do is check in with our operations team to confirm. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, who, who asked that? That Maybe we can get that person's contact information so we can get exact locations. Um, yes, Robert, if you would like to email us directly at contact.civicmike.com, then we'll get that answer directly to you. Um, Joe Green. Yes, okay. I submitted a I submitted a comment to via chat to Brianna. It has not been answered yet. Okay. Question. Okay. The comment is in the future, prioritize chat questions before verbal raise hands. Otherwise, grandstanders dominate at others' expense. No, that's not the question. It's the earlier one. Earlier. One second. I submit. What happens if we had no special benefit, basically? What's the base level of service the city would provide if nothing's approved and we don't have a special district? Um, if there was no special district, likely there would be zero landscaping um, services. The lighting services that would be provided would be just electrical. Um, if there were any special um, lights, like some of the decorative lighting, uh, if there weren't repairs needed or, or one just went out, it would be replaced with the standard Cobra head um, lighting. Um, but likely all of the um, landscaping would not be um, serviced unless it was on a thoroughfare like Manuel Campos or um, uh, Hillborn, um, major thoroughfares like that. 
So would it be torn out and just covered with rock where we have shrubs and things on roads? What, what would happen? Likely, uh, yes. No. It, likely it would be um, replaced with um, uh, drought tolerant um, you know, bark, rocks. Um, we would probably make those decisions on a, on a case by case basis, but yes. Thank you for that um, question, Joe. Um, Leland, and then I'll go to iPhone who's unmuted already. Uh, Leland, go ahead. You're unmuted, but we cannot hear you. We'll go ahead and go to the iPhone that's unmuted. And then Leland, if you can work on your audio, we'll come back to you. Okay, um, were there any questions of individuals that did not raise their hand? If you'd just like to unmute and say your, your name. Okay, um, as we talked about, any questions? Um, hi, um, Diana? my name is Diana. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, um, I walk along Hillborn. I live in Rolling Hills and I noticed that the weeds are growing taller and taller and um, they're, they're going to seed now. And uh, I guess I'm thinking that as they go to seed, they're gonna plant more weeds and, and the more weeds there are when they finally do have a bid come in, it's probably gonna end up being higher because it's gonna look worse. So I guess my question is, can we, uh, who the people that live in the neighborhood um, pull those weeds? Is that, is that okay? Is that violating something? Um, I imagine there may be some liability issues with that. We do have our city attorney, David Lim, on the line here. I'm not sure if he has an answer, um, you know, for that off the top of his head, or he may have to do a little more research. Um, we... Sorry, Ken. Uh, this is David Lim, the city attorney. Um, Diane, can you ask the question again? So you're asking, can oh, someone just yes. go on to the public right away and start pulling the weeds? Well, I'm just thinking about just walking along Hillborn. So there's the sidewalk. I, I, I don't know if you've been there. You've probably driven on it because it's kind of the back, road, the back way to avoid the freeway when it's full. Um, but yeah, just walking along the sidewalk, there are just tons of weeds growing. And I'm wondering, can we just pull those, put them in a bucket and you know, put them in our yard waste containers? Just like as we walk, I see other neighbors do this too. We just pick up garbage because um, you know, there's just, garbage that people throw out and I pick it up as I walk. Can I just pull weeds also? Yeah, you know, Diane, you actually answered the question the way I was going to answer it. Um, you know, there's no legal magical formula. People, you know, if, if I'm walking down the street and I see litter in my street, I'm a good citizen. I go ahead and I pick it up. Uh, there's no mm -hmm. harm in doing that. It's, it's you know, good civic uh, participation. I think what you want to avoid is if you, you know, start form forming you know, like a gardening party and you go out there with a weed whacker and uh, shears that probably raises some concerns of potential liability uh, for the city. You know, I hate to be the wet blanket, but, you know, I'm the city attorney, so I'm answering as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, if you go out and pull some weeds, just like if you go out and pick up trash to help out your community, I don't think, um, you know, you're doing it on your own. So, you know, it's, it's sort of hard to say, well, the city made me do it, and so I'm going to hold the city liable. Hope that answers okay. the question. Yeah, it does Diana, Thank uh, you. To, to cool. David's point, Diana, we can, um, in the working groups, that's some of the things that we can talk about, ideas for cleaning the community, um, and then we can go back to the city and ask for options on organizing some of that. So great suggestion or question there. Um, uh, do you have more questions, or can I ask one more, or do you have other people we, lined we up? We do. We do. I'm okay. sorry. Um, we'll go that's to okay. a couple more and come back to you. Jordan, go ahead. You can unmute. Hi. Yeah. Uh, uh, I my, I had a question for David also. Uh, my house sits in an area where I have open space behind my home. And um, in the past, I've gone and gone back there because of the fire hazard to try to trim uh, the weeds and, and keep things down. Is it possible to enter into an agreement with with the city of Fairfield as like an, an adopt a park or adopt an open space where we could figure out what li what liabilities there are and maybe come up with an agreement on what we can do and what we can't do. 
to keep our, our main concern in this area is just the fire hazard. I mean, two years ago, we had the fire coming over the hill. It was probably a quarter mile from our homes. So we're really concerned about the fire hazard. And like someone previously mentioned, along the walkway between the open space and the homes, there are weeds that are probably eight feet tall already. And we're not even, you know, near fire season. So is there a way we can enter into an agreement with the city to be able to take care of that open space and not be uh, liable for, you know, being cited for some, for something? So uh, that's a great question. And number one, I'm sorry that you have to deal with the stress of, you know, your open space and the fire dangers. That's a question I'm going to refer you to public works and probably our, our zoning department, because there are mechanisms in, in place if you're dealing with open space land. Uh, and you want to get some sort of variance either for, you know, zoned property or city owned property. It's sort of outside the range of this LLMD discussion, but there are mechanisms. Uh, it comes up from time to time when people want to cut down a city tree or do something on city property. There are mechanisms in place to discuss that with the city. So I would refer you back to either public works or the building and planning department. Fantastic. Thank and you. I know the um, public works um, uh head is is on this meeting so I, I am sure he's probably taking a note and he can he can get in touch with you or you can yeah. email me and i'll make sure that he gets that message okay and i'll also that, make sure all questions that are asked tonight that um did not receive responses we'll make sure to follow up with the city to get those answers okay, yeah I'll jump and, in and, just briefly uh jordan if i may so jordan my name is paul koshwell i'm the public works director mm -hmm. um another option that that we could look at is um is discussed with our fire department our fire prevention bureau our fire marshal takes calls like these or inquiries like these because they help manage the open space areas and actively work with um, a contractor to abate um, these open areas, open space areas in um, uh, in response to or ahead of the fire season. Um, and so they do it at least a couple of times a year um, where they look at those areas. Um, so we could engage with them as well to look for opportunities. Well well, my experience in the five years I've lived here, the only mitigation that there is in the entire year is there are sheep that come and they eat for about two weeks and they leave. And there are lots, I mean, they do as good a job as a sheep can do, but there, there's no personal attention of people coming and actually looking what's back there and seeing what needs, needs attention and what doesn't need attention. Okay, fair enough. Well, we can engage with the fire department and um, see what else might uh, might be able to be done there. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul and Jordan for that. Um, Bianna, you had some other yes. questions in the we chat? We have a few more questions from the chat. So for LMD, LLMDA number seven, why the sharp increase in expenditure in 2020-21? Excellent question, excellent question. So that question was answered um, uh, earlier in the presentation. Uh, the contract uh, for landscape services was ended, um, I think, at the end of 2019, and a new contract was out to bid, um, uh, and um, all the bids that were received were up to 50% higher than expected, and so the city did go with the lowest bid available to them at that time, and so that's the reason for the um, increased um, costs um, around, around that time. Um, another question we have is, why is the loan amount for Rolling Hill so much greater than the other areas? Chris? Uh, for that, it is just due to um, the uh, landscape services um, need, the water services need out there. It also has to do with the funding balance that each district had available to them, um, you know, leading up to this point. Um, so there's, it, it just worked out that um, in order to provide rolling hills with those same services, um, this is this is the amount that, uh, the loan amount that they need uh, for that. Another question is, what exactly does landscaping and lighting do? So the landscaping and lighting services provide an enhanced level of services um, uh, other than what you would find in other public areas throughout the city. So in many places throughout the city, neighborhoods take care, individual property owners take care of their own uh, landscaping on their property. And there's little to no landscaping in the public right-of-ways, um, no landscaping on the major thoroughfares. Um, 
So uh, these landscaping and lighting maintenance districts provide, um, uh, I would say, you know, enhanced, I, I keep using that word, but that's pretty much what it is. You know, you'll see more greenery, you'll see uh, different types of plants, um, you'll see the decorative lighting rather than the, just the standard cobra heads. Um, and uh, that's really the purpose of these districts. Thank you, Chris. Uh, let's see, Sam, did you have another question? I did, just an observation. I was looking at the chart that you put up for, and we're in Paradise Valley, and the chart would give the appearance that we have a marginal uh, decrease in service to kind of correct the shortfall. And uh, from my observation, and I'm out there like every day, the, the reduction in service has been radical. I mean, it, it's the Paradise Valley Road, the, the weeds and the ivy that's taken over homeowners' fences. There are just a lot of stuff there that is not addressed at all anymore. So uh, from my observation, the, the reduction in service has been radical. That's it. With this, um, we, we have to, um, you know, a 10% a reduction in, in budget for landscape services doesn't necessarily equate to a 10% reduction in overall services provided. Um, the reason for that is costs go up. Um, so whereas let's say mowing cost, um, you know, $10 before, um, now it costs $12, um, right? And um, so it's not a direct um, correlation between the amount of services we received and the total dollar amount that we've reduced. So although the chart is showing the dollar amount that we've, um, um, uh, we've reduced the dollar amount, it doesn't necessarily correlate to the amount of landscaping services we've had to reduce in order to keep under that dollar amount there. So if you refer to the chart though, um, that's on the Civic Mike website, you can see exactly what services have been reduced, um, their quantities and frequencies, et cetera. Um, that'll give you a, a good indicator, uh, or, you know, a good um, a picture of, of what you could expect at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, the one thing I noticed that before with a previous contractor, you'd see somebody out there nearly every workday doing something, whether it's leaves or trimming or mowing. Now we're lucky if we somebody see somebody there once or twice a week. It, it's just not working so far. So thanks a lot, though. I appreciate the meeting. Thank you, Sam, for that question. Um, we have a couple other questions that came through the chat. So why use a general fund, uh, the general fund loan instead of just using funds from the general fund? I think we covered that earlier, that this is really special benefit to each community. So general funds can't be granted to a community for special benefit that isn't given to the entire city. Um, then there was a question about the Federal Recovery Act, um, which we covered, and we'll make sure to um, put that information on civicmike.com and um, what things can be done to control rising costs. Paul, maybe that's something you can uh, talk about as well as um, they want to know who is holding the city accountable for the work. So I think both the rising costs and the work that's being done to make sure um, that the services that are actually being provided that were that the city's paying for. Sure, I can talk a little bit about that. Um, so, as we um, set up the landscape maintenance contracts, um, those are overseen with the help of our operations department, and we have a division um, that oversees landscape maintenance. Um, within that division, we have three landscape um, inspectors, um, and so they monitor the work. Uh, they they administer the landscape uh, contracts. Um, and then as part of that effort, uh, they do, um, you know, they, they coordinate with the landscape uh, contractors and they do um, inspections um, and reports that go along with that and follow up um, on the work uh, as well as a review um, uh, the work uh, against what's required in the contract um, as they uh, provide um, and, and um, uh, complete invoices uh, to pay the contractor for their work. And we have had to, in, in the past, uh, withhold payment uh, when the work hasn't been performed. And at times, unfortunately, had to fire contractors if they, if they continue to uh, not perform. Thank you for that, Paul. Um, so we are at 7.30. We've had um, more than half of the 
uh, participants drop off the call. We want to make sure that everyone that has questions gets them answered, but we also want to share that information in a easy manner with the community so people can find the answers to those questions. So I'm going to take um, Randy, Rick, and Pam, um, those will be our final questions. After that, if your question wasn't answered um, or something comes up, you know, right when you hang up the, the meeting, please email us at contact at civicmic.com. That's C-I-V-I-C-M-I-C.com. We will um, respond to your questions. If we don't know the answer right away, we will um, work with the city to get those answers, and then we'll post all of that information on the website so your questions are all answered and uh, the email address is there in the contact. So Randy, would you like to unmute and ask your question? I just had a procedural question. There's sure. a reference to a working group. The first meeting is on April 28th. Is that going to be an ongoing group? Yes, that is. Okay. I have volunteered to join it, but I can't be there on the 28th. So that was my only question. Okay, yes, please reach out to us. Um, that will be ongoing. And, you know, okay. someone else mentioned they don't have a lot of time. Um, you can join the group, find out the information and get added to the email list so we can share what others are doing, kind of the grassroots efforts to help yeah. your neighbors learn and, you know, participate when you can. So great question. Thank you, Randy. All right, thanks. Rick, would you like to ask your question? You're on mute still. Here we go. I'll ask you to unmute. There we go. Very good. I, I want to thank Chris for her information on the four lines of options. What will happen if we get a loan and we don't go with a new district? For my district at, Rolling, at uh, Paradise Valley, it will not be a problem. Rolling Hills is the problem area. If Rolling Hills gets a loan and does not approve a new district, the remaining $83 or $83,000 that's currently being spent in maintenance will go to pay the loan. There will be no funding available for maintenance. That was not very clearly brought up. But she did a good job. It, it did express that if the loan is approved and the new district is not approved, that it will be a negative impact. The clarity would be that all of the remaining maintenance funds would go to pay the loan. And I wanted Chris to go ahead and address that if she could, just to clarify it. I'm gonna make sure I'm not saying anything out of, out of uh, class or out of turn there, but I believe that to be very accurate. Chris? Um, so over the five years, yeah, I think the, the, the loan payment would total, um, you know, what is the 400, 80, yeah, $80,000 um, for the, the annual loan payment um, and the, um, Total services, total landscape services is a uh, contract is about eighty thousand dollars. Now we would try to do a combination of landscape and water. I mean, you know, we it would be a combination of the two. Um, and if no services were being provided, maybe we can, you know, we could uh, reduce the the staff time. So I think it'd be a combination between all line items. But essentially, most of the services would go away for those uh, five years. Great, great, great question, Rick. Thank you. Um, Pam, would you like to take yourself off mute? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for um, the presentation this evening. I'm going to be having a series of town hall meetings in each district to talk about this further. But I just um, want to ask if there is any um, information available to our residents regarding what increased and decreased levels of services, what that actually means, where, where, they can, where they can go online and say, okay, I live in district, you know, seven, this is what increased services looks like, this is what decreased services looks like. So, um, yeah, I think that would be helpful for people trying to make a decision on how to um, you know, how, the, how they're going to vote on, on this issue. What does increased and decreased services actually look like? And are you so, referring to, Pam, sorry to interrupt you. Um, are you referring to like a visual picture? Because we have the services currently offered and the services that, uh, what those line items look like. But are you, are you um, thinking that uh, like a visual, a picture of what the landscaping looks like now and what it could look like? Is that what you're referring to? No. What I'm referring to is what 
decreased and increased services actually means. So does it mean like one of the earlier um, people, uh, one of the earlier residents, you know, mentioned, it does it mean, you know, like weeding, um, cut, uh, um, weed abatement? I mean, what, what exactly are people paying for? I, yeah, I, so we I, have those details exactly on civicmike.com. So we can email them out to you as well. Um, anyone on here that wants that email to them, feel free to reach out to us. But we do have those line items. That's what Chris was saying um, earlier in the call. She was going to look those up and make sure we put them out there. But we already have that detailed information available. As far as new services and enhanced services that could be a potential for mm -hmm. community members, um, when you go to... Um, cast your ballot on a higher assessment, that will all be determined in the future working groups that we'll have. So that's kind of where we're honing in on what priorities are for each community and what's really important. And then that'll be used to craft the new assessment with new budget numbers and then come to you and your community and say, okay, we heard that you know landscaping is really important, mowing the lawns, green grass, lots of water, changing out the flowers, that's important to your community. And if we look at those priorities, this is what that new assessment will look like. So as far as future potential, that's going to be worked through over the next six months. Um, as far as decreased services from what where it was, that's available already on civicmike.com. But like I said, we can email it directly to you if, um, if that's easier. I, I would just encourage that we make this information as user-friendly as possible so that it's right Perfect. up front. So it's right up front so that everybody can access it, you know, at a, at, at the click of their, you know, modem or whatever. So, right. Thank you for that, Pam. Yeah. Good advice. Um, we'll Thank we'll you. move a link to the main page there, maybe make it um, as easy as possible. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Pam. Um, thank you all for sticking with us tonight. Um, like I said, please reach out to us with any other questions you have. We would will be more than happy to get your answers posted on the website. This entire presentation will be on the website if you'd like to share it with your neighbors um, and um, help us to keep others informed. So once again, thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thanks, everyone.